1972 was the year Ronald Ngala, the Minister for Power and Communications and former leader of the opposition Kenya African Democratic Union, Kadu, at the time of independence, died. Ngala died on Christmas Day after a car accident near Konza on the Nairobi-Mombasa Road. Almost immediately after his death, rumours started doing the rounds that the accident that killed him was not an accident at all. There were those, especially at the coast, who believed that Ngala's death had something to do with the Kenyatta government. There were calls for a public inquest, with some politicians and trade union leaders allied to Ngala even demanding that a reputable and distinguished judge from Britain be appointed to head the inquest. The government did set up an inquiry the following year, chaired by Nairobi senior resident magistrate S.K. Sachdeva. After hearing more than 30 witnesses, Sachdeva issued his findings. Ngala's death was entirely due to accidental causes, the most likely of which was that in order to avoid hitting some wildebeest crossing the road, Ngala's driver had suddenly applied his car brakes and in the process lost control of the car. But by then, there were other issues that the government was concerned about. In June, there was an exodus of Ugandan Asians, whom the military government of General Idi Amin had given three months to leave Uganda, accusing them of exploiting Ugandans. Thousands of the fleeing Ugandan Asians passed through Nairobi in their frantic effort to get to Britain, before deadlines the British immigration authorities had announced for free entry of people holding dual nationality expired. Most Ugandan Asians, and indeed many Kenyan Asians too, held dual nationality. The plight of the Asians fleeing Uganda created a problem for Kenyatta's government. In Kenya too, there were many Kenyan Africans who were resentful of the commanding positions that Asians had taken in Kenya's business and industry. They felt that Kenya should follow Amin's example. Sentiments to that effect would soon be voiced by MPs, among them Butere MP and Assistant Minister in the Office of the Vice President, Martin Shikuku. This only accelerated Kenya's own Asian exodus to Britain, which had started the previous year, to beat the British dual citizenship immigration deadline. For a while, the government sealed its borders with Uganda to stem the tide of fleeing Ugandan Asians but it changed its mind and allowed them a five-day transit stay in Kenya after Britain guaranteed to accept any Asian who had been thrown out of Uganda by Amin. The Asian exodus resulted in a major business slump in Kenya and the loss of many jobs. To deal with the latter, Vice President Daniel Arap Moy directed that non-citizens working in a number of industrial and commercial firms in Kenya must have a work permit, a requirement which was to become a permanent feature of the country's immigration regulations from then on. 1972 was also the year Nairobi Mayor Margaret Kenyatta was re-elected for a second term unopposed. Elected to serve under her, was Andrew Ngumba. In the world of commerce and industry, this was the year President Kenyatta laid the foundation stone for Pan-African paper mills in Webuye. The venture would become the biggest paper manufacturing plant in Eastern Africa. And in sports, the year saw Kipchoge Keino get a silver medal in the 1500 meters race at the Olympic Games in Munich, Germany being outsprinted in the home stretch by Finland's Pekka Vesala. Keino would go on to win the gold medal in the 3000 meter steeplechase at those Olympic Games, ahead of his compatriot Ben Gipcho, who won a silver. In addition to Ronald Ngala, Kenyans said farewell in 1972 to boxing star John Olu, who died in a road accident, and to famous anthropologist Louis Leakey, whose extensive archaeological excavations had suggested that Kenya was the cradle of mankind. <laughs>